give a warm applause to Dr. Homer Lin. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice for you to come today. Uh, it's been our hard work in organizing this event. This is uh, probably one of the first, in fact, Dr. Levy and Dr. Yan Yanagisawa's first trip in Manila. Okay, so they've never been in Asia aside from Tokyo. So this is the first time for them to come here and share their knowledge. It's really an honor and a privilege for them to come here because uh, they are always very busy going to different parts of the world from Algiers to Poland. So it's really an honor and I would really thank the two speakers for allowing and giving us the time to share their knowledge today. So again, thank you everyone for coming. I hope you learn from the experts. Literally, they are the experts when it comes to uh, all these integrative vitamin C aside from, uh, vitamin C in, uh, also aside from vitamin C is the integrative medical therapies that you would hear today and tomorrow. Again, thank you for coming. And uh, may I introduce to you our uh, former Department of Health Secretary and of course the President and CEO of Health Futures Foundation and uh, my co-host on our radio show, Doctor's Orders. Everyone, please welcome for our opening remarks, Dr. Jaime Galvestan. A warm and pleasant good morning to all. Magandang umago po. Good morning. Okay. Thank you for this wonderful day that we have this, uh, the, in, yeah, I would say the International Scientific Workshop on Integrative Medical Therapies. I would like to personally and professionally welcome, of course, our two very special guests today. Their first time in the Philippines, Dr. Thomas Levy, yes, from Denver, Colorado. One more round of applause for, to show our great welcome to this magnificent person. And of course, to Atsuo-san, Atsuo-san Yanagisawa, direct from Japan, also for the first time, together with her lovely daughter, Riza. Welcome, please, a round of applause. Yes, I, I hope you'll have time to also see the Philippines. And to all the very, very special people who are all here, uh, some of them friends, some of them new friends, some very old friends. Great, a warm and pleasant good morning. I'd like to congratulate, of course, Dr. Homer Lim for organizing this international scientific workshop. And I know it takes great courage and takes a lot of effort and energy. And, but just to show you how much the, Dr. Homer is working so hard, but when I was met by his wife, I said, who is this teenager? <laughs> I th she was 20 years younger. I think Dr. Homer is applying her te his technology <laughs> in the family. I was asked by Dr. Homer to talk on integrative medicine, so I just decided that I would, to keynote this workshop is to introduce ourselves also to this concept of integrative medicine in the 21st century. Quite interestingly, as I search the literature, as well, of, co of course, in the internet, I could not find a universal definition of integrative medicine. Nevertheless, let me just um, give you a peek of what I feel as in the synthesis that I saw in the, in the literature. So first of all, there is a, like a global recognition of integrative medicine, not only, of course, in Asia, but in Europe, in the United States, in the UK, as well as even in Aust Australia. I didn't get to see enough literature in West Asia or in Africa, but I'm sure there are. It just not, not, might not be there, okay? So just to say, what are the different forms? that you will get to see as you go around the world or even search the literature. What is interesting is that there are different academic consortia now 
for integrity benching, which means to say that in any country, there would be different uh, consortia. Of course, a consortium of, of similar thinking people or those who are interested in the field of integrative medicine. A lot of integrative medical medicine programs in many hospitals, medical centers, even in colleges of medicine, and even associations. Interestingly, in all the countries that I've seen, there would always be an association. And I know Dr. Homer Lim is uh, organizing. Now here itself, there are several in, in various names, okay? And National Institutes of Integrative Medicine as well. Then there are departments, as in many hospitals or in colleges of health sciences, and interestingly, also journals. And I hope you're, you, you have access to them. Many of them are peer-reviewed international journals. Okay, so what is integrative medicine? Out of the many definitions that I see in various countries, I just highlighted what are common and across the board, just to say this. So, there is a philosophy, it's a philosophy. You can also say it's a healthcare-oriented medicine. Okay, so philosophy of healthcare and healing oriented medicine. Okay, so, but who else is not? <laughs> Even conventional medicine will say, but of course here is where you say it focuses on the whole person and I will elaborate on that later on. And there is an affirmation or always a reaffirmation of the relationship between the patient and the health practitioner. Okay. Again, highlighting Evidence-based medicine, it is informed by evidence using appropriate therapies, combining conventional medicine, that is the term I will be using for what we say the, con uh, the modern medicine that is common, particularly in the United States, Europe, and in most modern countries, let's say, and established uh, approaches and proven practices of healing traditions from around the world. If you will notice, this is present in the literature. I decided to use the more encompassing term, established approaches, proven practices of healing traditions from around the world. Okay. So let me just say here, well, for those who are studying the history of medicine, that there are three, or right now, of course, four, I'd like to include modern medicine as the fourth what we call great traditions of medicine. And so we would have Ayurveda, or the Indian traditional medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Yunani Tib traditional medicine, which is mostly West, West Asia, and of course modern medicine, mainly located, as I said, in the, uh, thriving well in Europe and in the United States. And so I will Plus, these are called great traditions. Others, like we will say in Japan or the Philippines or Vietnam and other countries, they are labeled by the anthropologists as little traditions of medicine. So I'm using that term because I feel that is a more neutral and more respectful term. So integrative medicine also aims to achieve optimal health, facilitating the body's innate healing response, maintaining total well-being, and enhancing the resilience of the patient. So this is what uh, most literature are saying about integrative medicine. So what about complementary medicine and alternative medicine? This is the term. It is mainly used by the United States. In 1999, uh, the U.S. finally could not resist anymore the dynamic presence of the healing traditions of the world. And especially because in around in the 90s, there was a shift in diseases. Well, before, there was a focus on the germ theory and looking at everything anti. When you come to hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and even cancer, it's a multifactorial. It's not only a bacteria or a virus or a parasite 
or a fungus, but it is what is now labeled as lifestyle diseases, wherein it became attractive to the population of Europe and the United States to look at Asia and look at the various non-allopathic treatment of, for these lifestyle diseases. So this is where when Ayurvedic medicine came into recognition in the U.S. and in Europe, so yoga, meditation, Ayurvedic me medicines uh, became more acceptable than the usual. And the same is true for traditional Chinese medicine with the introduction of acupuncture, particularly in Europe by the French and right now, of course, available now all throughout the world. Um, these are the very hallmarks of the start of integrative medicine. And so the United States at that time labeled them by organizing in the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, in 1999, the National Center for Complementary Alternative Medicine. So let me just say that the World Health Organization, way, way back in 1978, in the Alma'ata Declaration of Primary Health Care, the World Health Organization considers traditional medicine, or the other term I'm using here is healing traditions, as the term to describe what is what we call complementary and alternative medicine. This is what I would say later on, I will show you that traditional medicine definition is more respectful of the country's heritage and culture. Now for me, this is my personal editorial comment. The labels complementary medicine and alternative medicine for me are condescending, derogatory, judgmental, inferring that conventional medicine or modern medicine is superior to any other forms of medicine. Oh, you're just complementary. Okay, alternative, but not mainstream. Okay, so it shows the imperialism of the United States, still strong, and of course dictating to the world what is dominant, and the dominant medicine is, of course, what is now, I would like to label it, North American European medicine as the dominating economic, political, cultural medicine of the world. But, Therefore, they have the imperialistic right, right, R-I-G-H-T, to say that you are just complementary. Okay. Acupuncture, complementary, okay. homeopathy, somewhere there, only when we need it. Okay. Anyway, interestingly, in, the, in terms of the jargon or the term complement integrative medicine, the NIH in the United States has already changed since two years ago. Well, when they created the National Center for Complementary Alternative Medicine in 1999, and since 2015, this has been changed to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Medicine. So for the first time, the USA is officially using the term integrative medicine, but I have to analyze how the NCIH formerly, uh, sorry, NCCIM is defini defining this because if you have seen the website of the NCCAM ever since 1999, it comes out with its own dictation of what is complementary and what is alternative. Okay. So let me just put that, it's an editorial comment and whether you'd, li you'd like to reflect on it throughout these two days, it's, it's one way of generating interest into coming to terms with what is integrative medicine. So I came out with the framework. This is my 2017 framework, but I will show you a 2001 framework which I've been using. So in this initial definition 
or at that time, consensus coming out in the world that still the person is the center surrounded by his family and community. And that's why you will see person-oriented, people-oriented, community-oriented healthcare, but with uh, six dimensions of health, wellness, and well-being. So in this uh, particular framework, there are six. So uh, in the definition of World Health Organization, it has only three dimensions of well-being. That is the physical well-being, the mental well-being, and the social well-being. In fact, social well-being is so radical that even up to the present, and this definition was already since 1948, and reiterated in 1978, and not merely the absence of disease, by the way. So when WHO says that health is the achievement of total well-being, physically, mentally, and socially, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, it was just showing that uh, there were three them. And in social health, which is, of course, all about relationships, this is the one still hardly recognize. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that you hardly see a department of social medicine. It's still rare, particularly uh, in the Philippines. Let me just put that. So here, on top of that, uh, the world was getting more familiar that there are three more on top of what the World Health Organization says about well-being. It was also talking of spiritual well-being as well as emotional well-being and, and environmental well-being. Okay. So let me just put it that way. And now this is the 200, 2017 framework that I'm introducing after reviewing the literature that it is now an eight-pointed star. So remember, uh, in the first framework, that is a six-pointed star, okay, a six-pointed star, and two triangles, well this one, two squares fused together to come out with an eight-pointed star. And what has been added here uh, in many, many literature, I added, of course, financial wellness. Financial wellness. I think you will not be able to attend today's workshop if you did not have financial wellness. Well, that's a fact, okay? And to come here for Dr. Levy and Dr. Atsuo, <laughs> that would require some financial wellness on the part of Homer Lim. <laughs> okay, so then I in integrated workplace as distinct from the environment. The environment is more our home environment, our neighborhood, the cities where we live. But the workplace is a totally now being defined as another source of well-being that where we are working, it should also be a place of well-being, wellness, and health and healing. Okay, so still the same, just the color is a matter of choice really on uh, which color <laughs> approximates the character of the well-being. So, as you can see, it's getting wider, and I'm sure for most of you, you might want to have a 12-pointed star or a 10-pointed star, okay? Okay, so let me just give a word since uh, I'm from the Philippines and I'm personally welcoming our guests from outside the Philippines. Let me just give a short, very uh, bird's eye view of what is Filipino traditional medicine. In my dialogue with more than a thousand traditional healers from the north in Batanes to the south in Sulu and Tawi-Tawi, as I get to interview in my 42 years of medical practice in the Philippines, I get to interact with a lot of traditional healers in the Philippines. And there is a certain commonality that they talk of uh, what I call the triads of relationship in Filipino traditional medicine. So one is the external relationship of the person, of the Filipino in this character, a relationship with the 
with the divine or the universe. No, I mean, you can define, they, they talk in terms of universe, but uh, here I'm equating it with kalawakan uh, in Tagalog for those who are Filipinos. Please ignore, sorry, if it's my phone. <laughs> sorry, if it, I knew I, I placed it in silent mode. My apologies. Thank you very much, Dr. Levy. <laughs> and uh, so this is Kalawakan in Tagalog, in Filipino, and it's the universe, de facto. And when I ask, what is in the universe? The Supreme Being, Bathala in Tagalog. Then there is the relationship with the environment, Kalikasan, interpreted in Philippine terms as God's creation. And of course, the, Philipp the person's relationship with the humankind or kanyang kapwa and which means again social medicine well defined in the concept of relationships and then there is of course the internal relationship with one's own persona and that is the spirit the body and the mind commonly also across the world okay so these are basic concepts and when we fuse again the two triangles, we come out with that six-pointed star. So from the universe, humankind, and nature, we have also body, spirit, and mind. And this is where health and wellness and well-being emanates according to our traditional healers. And the official definition, as I placed it uh, way back in 2005, and... This is, as I said, from interviews with more than, or hundreds or more than right now, thousands of traditional healers. Uh, the Filipino traditional medicine concept is defined as health and wellness is the state of harmony, balance, and synergy between humankind and the universe, between humankind and nature, between and among humankind and within the human body, mind, and soul. So let me put that as this is the definition that I came out, out of a conglomerate of interviews across the country coming out with a national definition of health and wellness from the Filipino traditional medicine. Yes, it does affirm the universality of this concept. Okay. Now, let me share with you, in 1978, the World Health Organization, when it said that primary health care or health for all can only be achieved by integrating traditional medicine into primary health care. And this is the definition which I feel is very respectful, if you will notice it, very um, very kind definition when it wants to assume whether it is the traditional medicine of Native Americans or uh, the Japanese people or the Filipino people or for any other country for that matter. So the World Health Organization says traditional medicine is the sum total of the knowledge, skills, and practices based on theories, beliefs, and experiences. Again, the term indigenous to different cultures. Now, this is where the debate starts. But here, WSO puts forward a very progressive definition, whether explicable or not. Okay. Whether explicable or not. In the era of evidence-based medicine. So um, this is, of course, very questionable. But again, as I said, very respectful because you have to be in the culture to be able to explain. For us, it may be inexplicable. If we look into the native cultures or medicines of Indonesia, but only the Indonesians can explain it. But from our point of view, it is inexplicable. Okay. 
Again, use in the maintenance of health as well as in prevention, diagnosis, improvement, and treatment of physical and mental illness. Okay. So it's whether I look at the website of WHO and they have not changed this definition, but in fact, WHO is coming forward with uh, also a new term that they have, in a sense, uh, bowed down to the concept of they say now traditional complementary alternative medicine. Okay. Just to say, I totally disagree with that and I'd like to maintain this definition. Okay, so when now when, when I look at it, when what are we looking at when we talk of integrative medicine and it is really more modern medicine and in a sense the dominant medicine is now North American European medicine wherein we would like to integrate different cultures, uh, healing traditions or traditional medicine of a variety of countries, variety of cultures, variety of heritage from around the world. Okay, let me just put it that way. Let me just share with you what are the other features of integrative medicine that I saw in my literature review. So uh, the aim is to use the most appropriate, safe, evidence-based treatments available in the world today. While this may be, it may look like a standard character of modern medicine, but at the same time, uh, this is now in the context of looking at various healing traditions that may not be acceptable yet to North American European medicine. Another feature is that it is a philosophy that neither rejects conventional medicine nor accepts alternative therapies uncritically. Okay. So really the openness to looking at each dimension of medicine that is there. Other features are recognition that good medicine should be based in good science, be in inquiry-driven, and be open to new paradigms. And I think this is the challenge to all of us, not to immediately say no, but look at it with a critical eye, but at the same time find out for ourselves whether it is indeed going to be integrated or not. And this is the character now of integrative medicine, the use of natural, effective, and less invasive interventions whenever possible. I think there is no quarrel of the superiority of North American European medicine when it comes to surgery, life-saving, if you have an accident, you know, or things like that would need some response for example, for a very, very critical situation. And of course, use of the broader concepts of the promotion of health and the prevention of illness as well as the treatment of diseases. I think we have to be aware of the different dimensions. Let me therefore end this keynote to our work, international workshop today and tomorrow by ending with three challenges issues and challenges that I say for 2017 and beyond. Well, it is interesting that most of all the literatures are encouraging that we still do not have a consensus. That's why there is no universal definition yet to come out with a multi-country study on the perception of integrative medicine by medical practitioners and patients themselves. So not only the exclusive domain of medical practitioners, but how do our patients also define integrative when they come and seek us. The other one is, of course, this is the most challenging, very, very difficult, is standardizing research methodologies that are universally accepted by being evidence-based from the point of view of modern medicine and integrative medicine. The most difficult here is the universally accepted. I think if we meet someday, somehow, in the world, even within this year, there will be no agreement on what is universally accepted as yet. Maybe some, yes, particularly when we talk of integrative medicine. And I'd like to introduce the concept for those of you who have not heard of the Sustainable Development Goals. This is a global 
goal that we set for ourselves, in a sense, where our leaders signed it in the year 2010, which sets the goal for the world for the next 20 years, and what do we need to achieve in 2030? So ladies and gentlemen, there are 17 sustainable goals, but the one goal is particular to health, and that is sustainable development goal number three, and which says ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all, for all, universal health care, that means, and for all ages, young, adult, and older persons by 2030. So let me challenge you. I think this is one thing we can do in our own way, in our own small group, in our own associations, here or outside of the Philippines. What will be our role as a citizen of the world to ensure that the sustainable development goal number three will be achieved through integrative medicine? My thanks to all of you and to Homer Lim and to the organizers of this conference. To God be the glory and the honor and the praise. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Mabuhay.